So I've already given you guys my top five players that I'm looking forward to coming into the 2023 NBA season. Now I think it's time to give you my top five teams because I think this list is more in depth. It's more what I look for because I'm not much of a guy that follows players specifically. Of course, as any NBA fan has, I do have my favorite players and the guys I watch more closely than others. But what I mean is in large part, I don't really follow specific guys. I like to follow teams as a whole. Now, if a guy catches my attention, then I'll follow him. And that was the result of the last video. Now this video, these are the teams that pretty much had my attention towards the end of last year. And coming into this year, I kind of want to see what they're going to do with regards to how well they're going to be going forward and how they're going to build on top of what they ended with last year. As always, if you're not new, you already know what to do. Go ahead and hit that like button. Share this with all your friends and family. And if you're not new, I wouldn't appreciate anything more than for you to just sit here, enjoy the video. And if you find yourself liking the video at the end and liking me not just the video liking me included go ahead and subscribe so you can get a lot more of me now at number five i have the atlanta hawks i know i just did a video on the hawks and honestly i've pretty much covered all the things i looked for in this team but again this is more specific and it's obvious with the hawks they beat up their depth a little bit now, the last video I had that dropped earlier today, go watch that if you haven't already, I pretty much questioned whether or not the DeJounte Murray pickup really helped them the way we believe it could help them. We're inevitably gonna see Trey Young in a role that we've never really seen him before, and it's really a test to see how he gels with the rest of his team, especially with DeJounte Murray, because they potentially could have one of the best backcourts in the East. Other than bringing DeJounte Murray in, the Atlanta Hawks drafted AJ Griffin out of Duke, and they brought in Justin Hawks holiday to the squad as well. With DeJounte Murray coming in, I likely expect Doc Bogdanovich to move to the six man. And truthfully, I like that spot for him the most. Even in 2K, I put him at the six man spot and trying to find a guy to start for him. I just like Bogdanovich as a six man. He seems like he's perfect for the six man role and he averages 15 points per game. As many of us know, Bogdanovich is recovering from surgery on his right patella tendon to address knee inflammation. And I solely expect him to lead the second unit, not only in scoring, but also take the young bench players under his wing and keeping the spark alive for when they come into the game. Before getting hurt, as I stated before, Bogdan averaged 15 points per game and he did that on shooting 43% from the field while shooting 36% from three. Obviously, most Hawks fans want to put last year's playoffs in their distant memory and coming into this year, they have plenty reason of optimism and plenty reason to want to leave that behind. Again, as I stated in my last video, I think the Hawks are the dark horse of the Eastern Conference. The versatility DeJounte Murray brings to this team not to mention one of my more favorite guys to watch on this team, Jalen Johnson, hopefully developing even more over the summer, already has me at the edge of my seat waiting to watch Hawks game. We know Trey's gonna put on a show night in and night out, and I'm excited to see what the rest of this team can do. DeJounte Murray got a head start with regards to the hype train for me, because like I said, most players I don't really follow, but if they catch my eye, I'm gonna end up following them. And he's a guy I'm definitely following this year after all this summer antics with Paolo Bancaro and him hitting the ball off of some dude that just got off of work from his nine to five. Now the Hawks, they're going to be a team I know for sure. They're gonna have the whole league on notice. And if the chips do fall correctly, we could easily see them as a contender, but only time will tell if the pieces fall where they may. They could be a surprise team like they were two years ago when they were playing the Bucks in the Eastern Conference Finals. My next team on the list is the New Orleans Pelicans. They're in the best situation I've ever seen them be in with regards to me being a basketball fan. Throughout all the years I've seen them with the Chris Paul with Anthony Davis no matter who it was this is the best situation not only now but in the future that I've ever seen this franchise in. For the first time with this franchise there's not only hope but it's also the fact that they have a young core met with vets that all seem to want to be in New Orleans. They want to be there not that they have to be there they want to be. There. Whether it was Chris Paul squad or Anthony Davis squad you knew dark days were ahead no matter what or how well the season took place. This team you don't really see that dark cloud limit over them waiting for the perfect storm all of that starts with their head coach Willie Green if you watch this team battle in the playoffs it reminded me a lot of the Suns in the bubble a few years ago you know we all know the Suns came out of the bubble 
undefeated. They finished the year pretty hot, but they didn't really quite make the playoffs and get to where they wanted to be. Now the Pelicans fought tooth and nail to make it into the playoffs, but they didn't quite end it the way they would have liked to, especially with the hot ending to their season. And with the Suns, we already know what happened with that team. The rest is history and they're a contender for the past two years in this league. Now after game six, Willie Green was walking away and you could see the tears forming. These weren't really tears of sorrow though. They were what I would consider determined tears and what I would call determined tears. Those are basically the tears where, you know, when you work very, very hard for something and you come up just short, you come up short knowing that you put all into it and you're you're not upset because you came up short, but you're more so upset because you're, you busted your ass to get to where you're trying to get and you're frustrated because the outcome didn't go your way. But at the end of the day, it just didn't work out. Well, with regards to Willie Green, that's the spirit I got from him when he walked off the court off of the game six loss. I know he's still going to instill that into this team and they're going to use that pain to drive them to be even better. By the end of the year, I think we will all view Willie Green as a potential coach of the year and this team is going to rally behind him regardless. They have a young gifted player in Herb Jones guarding and holding his own against some of the best in the league day in and day out. You have Zion coming back healthy. You have amazing vets in B.I. and C.J. McCollum. And at the end of the day, I just think this team is going to be a force and I'm excited to watch them on the way to wreaking havoc on the West. The difference between this team and all the other teams on the list, most of the other teams, I was more or less looking toward what they're going to build off off of years past and how their young guys developed over the offseason. With the Timberwolves, I feel like this is a one-off with them in the sense that I don't think this team will really do anything special. I don't think they'll elevate too much higher than they were the last couple years. I'm excited to see not only what Anthony Edwards is going to bring to the table, but how this project plays out with trading for Rudy Gobert. It's very surprising and shocking to say, but I am extremely invested in how the dynamic between Cat and Gobert will shake out. Part of being a Hoop fan is having those big feelings towards the players you love, the teams you love, and all that other stuff. But what most people don't realize is part of being a real Hoop fan, you also have major feelings for the players you don't like and the teams you don't like. This is the case for me and Rudy Gobert. Honestly, that's the best way I could put it between me and Rudy Gobert. Rudy is one of those players I do root against. I won't lie about that, but I don't really think he's all that great. I don't think he's worth the money he's being paid. And I think his DPOY awards, they're a bit over inflator, but I cannot deny considering how much Minnesota gave up for him, they see a lot in him that I don't. I'm not a GM. I'm not a scout. I'm not any of those things. So there's obviously something there. Now, personally, I'm looking forward to being wrong about Rudy because I'm one of those guys. I try not to shoot people down, shit on people or anything of that nature. So I want to see Rudy Gobert be successful. And truthfully, I fully expect to stand still on my gripes with regards to him because I don't think much will change. This team has an opportunity to max his usage on the defensive end more than Utah due to a stronger backcourt. And with Cat playing at the four, he can switch and pick and roll situations, which will allow Gobert to stay in the paint and protect the rim the way he couldn't really do in Utah. Now, trust me, I do have my biases against players in certain teams and things of that nature, but I don't let those biases cloud my true judgment when I'm being impartial, when I'm being objective. And I've considered and seen the upside in Gobert being on this team. And honestly, I just want to see them put that into action. And of course, as I stated before, the biggest key to me wanting to watch this team, the main thing I want to see is Ant-Man cooking. Simple. This next team, I don't think there's many leaps they can take to excel higher than they did last year because they made a finals appearance. I don't see how you beat that other than actually winning a chip. And the way this team improved, they might be able to do that. Now, Boston, it is well known that to make it back to the finals, the Celtics, they would have needed to get better. And what did they do? They got better. As I stated in my Celtics journey video, this team resurrected from being three games under 500 in early July under a first-time head coach and turn that around by being two wins away from their 18th chip. The core has already stated that this finals loss not only fueled them, but the, the pain and the journey to get there, it only made them hungrier. And what's cool about it is it seems like the front office has developed that same appetite. They traded for Malcolm Brogdon and at the time of this recording, they're favorites for a trade and getting KD. Regardless if they get KD or not, this team has filled a much needed hole in their squad and that was finding another proven scorer, shot creator, and a guy that can honestly spot up if you need him to be on the floor with JB and Jason Tatum. The only hang up with Malcolm Brogdon is the fact that he's been injured the past two years and that's 
pretty much the story of his career thus far other than his early success and how good he could score with the Bucks. I fully expect my favorite player Jason Tatum to take a leap into stardom reaching the ranks of Braun, Steph, and Giannis while also seeing Jalen Brown's game mature it calming down a little bit because his game does seem like it's frantic here and there. All of that is going to be met with the squad ready to avenge that heartbreaking defeat and an M.A. Adoka exploding onto the scene replacing longtime head coach Bradley Stevens. This team is due for something special. One thing I admire the most about Ime Adoka and why he's become one of my favorite coaches in this league is the fact that he was able to harness the abilities of key vets, something many coaches aren't that good at doing and something that many coaches, they should probably take practice and to start doing. But he was able to harness the abilities of both Marcus Smart and Hal Horford and turn that energy into something greater. And one other thing that I feel like has gone completely under the rug that most people haven't really spoken out about he got Marcus Smart to stop shooting the damn ball Brad Stevens hasn't been able to do that in his eight-year tenure with the Celtics Ime Adoka did that in a couple months if that's not saying that's something I, I don't know what else there is to say about this man the second half of the season sparked an energy unlike any other in Boston and personally I'm looking forward to that spark expanding into a full-blown explosion and the Celtics having a chance to not only come out the east but finish the job and win the chip now this last team they, they're starting to sneak in as one of my favorite teams to watch and one of my favorite teams in the east now this team comes as no surprise if you do follow me on twitter and if you don't already go ahead and do that because you're missing a lot of content but the raptors are going to be a formidable title contender in the next two to three years scotty barnes this summer has gone crazy we've seen it in his workout videos we've seen it in his highlight videos i think scotty barnes is looking to take a massive leap his sophomore year most players they take a slight decline in their sophomore year but i'm looking for scotty to just go crazy like let's be real we knew scotty was gonna be good but nobody had an idea that he would be this good although the raps were eliminated in the first round of last year's playoffs they went out in impressive fashion i'm a kobe fan and as a normal kobe fan would be losing there's no way shape or form losing is impressive no way at all there's no formidable losses there's no losses that build care there's none of that as a kobe fan but with this team they show some heart and some grit to where i can call the loss impressive they were playing against the 76ers who, truth be told, they were just a better team. They just had more skill. Now, if you match the Raptors skill with the 76ers skill, I truthfully believe the 76ers would have gotten swept. Scotty Barnes got hurt and still played his tail off. When down 3-0, they battled back as hard as they could and avoided a sweep. And the most exciting part about this team that I think goes unnoticed and understated is their wealth of combo forwards on their roster. Personally, I love combo forwards. Love them. And I think think they're the future of the game get a team with a bunch of combo forwards some 3 and D guys some facilitating guys and some straight dogs that can just score and do everything that you need them to do and you pretty much have a recipe for a solid core but with this team they might have the nicest front court in the league you got rookie of the year Scotty Barnes you got all-star Pascal Siakam you got OG Ananobi you got Gary Trent Jr oh and not to mention they picked up Otto Porter from the Golden State Warriors we already know what Father Fred brings to the table and at the end of the day this might might be another team in the east to watch out for because the names on the roster might not jump out at you but they play hard are well coached have probably a top three coach in the league some straight bucket getters on this team and there are gonna be a problem that's all i got for you guys in this video today let me know who you guys have an eye out for this next coming season who and what teams you're looking for let me know why as always if you like this video go ahead and hit that thumbs up for your boy and if you're new hit that subscribe button Welcome to the gang. And until next time, it's your boy TB with the greatest hoop stories in the base on the tube. And I'm out.